Uh, hello everyone. Uh, today I'm going to give my two bits on how to get out of a scenario in 3ds Max where you have forgotten to reset X form on an object before scanning it and have completed the rigging process. I understand that such scenarios could be very frustrating, especially when you get weird results during animations and have to think about starting from scratch. So in this tutorial I'm going to teach you how you can copy your skin data into a new mesh with the old structure um, and without starting from scratch. Now, um, I ran into a very uh, similar problem a few days ago due to a bug where it gave uh, problems in exporting rather than the animation. Uh, by the way, just to be clear, my 3ds Max is a bit themed, so it may look somewhat different to what you have even if you are using Max 2017. If you like this theme, I have written a post on my blog on how to get a theme just like this. I will provide a link down in the description. Enough to chat, uh, let's get down uh, into the tutorial. I am going to start with the teapot here because it's a complex primitive, I would say. Uh, so there is a teapot and I'm just gonna draw it on the screen like this. Just going to change a few things here in the viewport. Um, so like this is just my personal preference. Nothing to do with the tutorial. Um, now let's uh, change this to an editable poly. Now I'm just going to mess around with the object here in an effort to change the pivot and scale gimbals before scanning. I mean just around to just mess it up uh, so that to show you that if it creates any problem or not. It probably won't because it's not that complex of an object. Uh, let's just uh, scale it up uh, 10 times than what it is. Okay, so that was a thousand times scale, it was in hundred, and I'm just going to rotate it uh, by turning on angle snap and rotating it to 25 degrees. So there it is. Now let's uh, turn it into a see-through object and add some bones. So I'm going to freeze it first, freeze selection. Go into the front view and I'm just going to add some bones in the scene. Um, let's just add four bones here. One, two, three, four. And it will create a knob which I will just delete and right click to exit the bone creation mode. Now right click unfreeze all to get it back. Now I'm going to enter a skin modifier. Now, now I'm not going to reset X form of this object but it is recommended to always reset X form before you apply the skin modifier on our objects but I'm, uh, for the sake of this tutorial I'm not going to do that. So adding a skin modifier to it and adding all the bones. So I'm just going to expand on and I'm going to select on. That's it. Now just uh, take a look at the weight. Now this is I'm just looking around here a bit. You know, nothing really like that. So I am not really satisfied with how it works out. Um, so what I'm going to do is uh, use this new feature called the uh, weight solver box cell. This is a really handy feature uh, to get you started with uh, 3ds Max scanning process. It's uh, it was uh, added to Max in I think um, Max 2016 extension one, but I'm not too sure. So you know you never know. But if you don't have uh, Max 2016 and you have a lower version than that, then I don't think you will get this. But this is just me taking the weight. So this is nothing. Uh, you know for the tutorial or something like that so yeah I mean I don't know I'm gonna probably decrease the fall off here Let's see how that works out 
but it turned out pretty good. Um, let's just do a manual tweak. Um, there you go. Um, okay, I'm gonna select the vertices here. Um, just hold on. Okay. And um, selecting this bone, I'm going to apply a weight of 1 to the body with the root bone. And the weight tool popped up because I have assigned a uh, control plus W as my shortcut. Closing this, I am done with it. Okay, so now you're done skinning um, without having its external reset. And suppose you ran into a problem later during animation, what are you gonna do? First, I'm going to create a new layer. Um, so let's just create a new layer here. My shortcut for this is Control plus L, just so you know how it popped up. I'm just going to name this new object. And just going to close it down. Okay. Now I'm going to clone it. Oh, just. Yeah. Now let's. Okay, um, that was not clone. Uh, let's hit clone and uh, be sure to uh, have copy on both the object and the controller here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and copy, probably name it Tbot New. And uh, delete the skin modifier from the new one. Now let's just move this to the new object. And there you have it. Good job. And I said that to myself. So, um, yeah, and uh, let's just hide the old layer here and select the new object that you just created, add skin modifier on, oh sorry, uh, first you have to reset the X form of this object. So, go to utilities tab, click on reset X form and reset selected. Now go to the modifier tab and collapse it and you're done. Now we're gonna add a skin modifier on top of it and um, add bones here. Oh, you have to make that layer visible, of course. Um, add bones. Now, uh, in this tutorial, for the sake of simplicity, I am adding the old bones here. But let's say if you have a problem with your bones, uh, maybe they are not scaling correctly or they have a gimbal lock or something like that, you would want to create new bones, a uh, similar in structure to the old bone, and name them similarly and then apply those new bones to this new mesh so that you can get the old skin data but uh, have new bones. So it's really that you don't have to rig it but you don't have the problem associated with the old bones and the old mesh anymore. And um, so I'm going to hide the old layer again. Uh, I'm just uh, doing this with the layer thing because uh, I don't want to clutter my viewport. It's not really necessary if you are free to do it. Uh, if you are like happy to do it without going to layer tabs and all, then you can do it. That's fine with you. Now just select the mesh, uh, the old mesh, and um, go to skin utilities in the utilities tab. Now you probably don't have this if you have never used it before. You can just go to configure button sets and, um, sorry, configure button sets, and uh, from there you can select uh, skin utilities under skin tools. I'm uh, sorry, cancel. Now uh, we have to click uh, with the old mesh selected, we have to click extract skin data to mesh. What it will do is it will create a new mesh with the name of the old mesh, uh, but with a prefix called skin data as you can see here, right here. Now I'm going to move this to a new layer, uh, just for the sake of simplicity. Mm, where are you? Okay, skin data. But move it to a new layer. I'm going to rename this skin data. Okay. 
now you are done with the old object. You don't need it anymore, so I'm just going to delete it. Um, and now just hide the old layers and um, unhide the new layer. So you see that uh, you have this uh, old thing and uh, sorry, the new mesh and the uh, skin data mesh uh, aligned perfectly. Now this is very important. You sh you should uh, let's say when you reset the X form on the object that you have cloned and it kind of got smaller or it rotated into its uh, previous state or something like that, you'd have to apply an uh, X form modifier. In uh, sorry, just like this, and you have to apply before uh, skin data. Uh, you would have to apply an X form modifier from the modifier list, and then scale it up and all, and then collapse it down, and then apply a skin modifier uh, to bring it to the shape of uh, shape and position of the old mesh, so that it aligns perfectly with the bone structure and with the skin data mesh. Now with uh, skin data mesh and the new mesh selected, without selecting the bones, just go to the utilities tab and click on import skin data from mesh. Now will uh, this uh, paste skin data dialog box will pop up. Um, since we are using the same bones, uh, we'll just hit match by name. Now let me tell you that if you're using new bones because you probably had problems with the old bones and uh, you can just uh, use these two buttons to help align the bones. Uh, make sure that those bones are structurally the same as the new bones. Otherwise it will create weird problems like uh, let's say the root bone uh, had uh, the whole body uh, weighted to it uh, but uh, you aligned the last bone uh, or the end of the chain bone to the body and it will just like reverse the whole order so that's not what you want. I'm gonna hit OK and now I can delete the skin data and you can see that my new mesh has the old skin data to it and if you have animated this bone already you will see that you know it's okay just gonna select it, probably gonna select this one and see how it right. So, you know, it works. Now, if you have just copied the skin modifier from the old mesh to the new mesh, it should have worked just fine. But in some cases, you need to change the bone too, uh, because you may hit problems such as weird scaling of bones or gimbal lock or stuff like that. And then pasting the modifier on the new mesh wouldn't work, because your new mesh uh, would have new, new mesh. Sorry, uh, your new mess uh, has new bones as associated uh, to it in the skin modifier, so that really wouldn't work, and you have to go through this whole process. Uh, well, I hope this tutorial was uh, useful to you. This is a real problem for animators in uh, 3ds Max, and so, you know, thank you for watching.